Thank you, Janet. Welcome back from break. We're at um, an exciting time now. We are entering our awards presentation um, for Citizens for Global Solutions. We're going to be giving out three awards today. Um, I will present two to two of our board members, and then Bob will present an award to our special guest, Martin Sheen. First, I would like to introduce to you, Lee Davis. Lee is a, receiving the CGS Lifetime Achievement Award. Originally from small town, Pennsylvania, Lee attended graduate school at Cornell University in New York, where she concentrated in biology and science education. There she met Ron Davis over dead fish in a vertebrate biology course. <laughs> they married on campus a year later and it, in 1957. While at Cornell in the late 1950s, the couple was impressed by a lecture given by Norman Cousins, who introduced them to the idea of world federalism. For those of you who don't know, Norman Cousins was president of the World Federalist Association, which was the precursor to Citizens for Global Solutions. While still Cornell students, the couple moved to Maine, where they have lived for 63 years. At first, they carried out field research projects to complete their graduate degrees. Afterwards, Lee worked at Jackson Laboratory researching animal social behavior. Lee became the proud mother of two daughters while starting her career in education. She taught at two colleges and the University of Maine. Her courses included general biology, ecology, medical terminology, and animal behavior. In addition to teaching, she's volunteered on many Earth Watch conservation expeditions around the world, from Sri Lanka and in India to Brazil, and from Kenya and South Africa to Australia. Lee has worked with several organizations other than CGS, including the Girl Scouts, the American Association of University Women, and the Bangor chapter of Citizen Climate Lobby, lobbying for legislation to reduce carbon emissions. Lee has been interested in enforceable world law ever since the encounter with Cousins in 1958. Back in 1986, Lee helped to organize the Orono Maine Peace Group, which eventually became Citizens for Global Solutions chapter. The, their focus in the early years was nuclear disarmament. And under her leadership, the group began carrying out the partners program of CGS on a monthly basis. A result of, as a result of her chapter work, Don Krause, who was executive director of CGS at the time, encouraged Lee to serve on both boards for the Action Network and the Education Fund back in 2010. In 2011, Lee became chair of the CGS Action Network board. I am personally indebted to Lee, who asked me to join that board back in 2013. So I am part of Lee's legacy. In addition to her work on the boards, Lee's contributions to CGS include that she's been a member of the CGS Leadership Committee for 10 years and still going strong. She and, she and her husband, Ron, are both members of our multimedia production team. Lee's a member of the CGS team that supports UN 2020 and the Coalition for the UN We Need. She's a reliable book club participant, a member of the Speakers Bureau, also along with her husband, Ron. She's a member of our environment and sustainability team and a faithful participant in the Global Week of Action for UN Parliamentary Assembly for many years, serving as our point person on the global planning calls at one point. And I just learned today in the chat that she approached her, her uh, senator from Maine to get him to support the UNPA. Lee's always doing things like that. As board chair, I wanna say that whenever there's anything that needs attention, Lee is one of the first board members to reply to emails and offer her assistance. Thank you, Lee, for over 30 years of promoting the idea of Norman Cousins in general and working with CGS in particular. You've been a faithful and reliable board member and a strong advocate for a democratic world federation. And right now I would like to show you her award. Here is an image of her CGS Lifetime Achievement Award to Shirley Davis is her real name, but we call her Lee. So I um, would also like now, Lee, if you would unmute yourself and say something so you're, you become the speaker and everyone can see you and can applaud. Okay, I'm 
unmuted. Uh, I'm delighted to accept this award from my good CGS friends from across the country. I do think of you as friends, not just members of an organization, but people who share the same values with me and who dream for the future of a world that could be. I never expected a dozen years ago that I would be able to connect with so many friends, all motivated to work for a democratic federation of nations. I cherish all of you. Last, I wanna leave you with a sort of a warning or a sort of a threat. Don't expect me just because I'm 88 years old to throw in the towel and retire from working with you. I plan to be at the next meeting. Oh, thank you, Lee. We're counting on you being there. So please join me in um, thanking Lee for her many contributions. And I look forward to many, many more years of, of working with you. Is that me? There's a little dog. Oh. I feel like Carol Merrill on Price is Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you could win if you pick the right. No, sorry. This thing is okay. in the way, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shoot. That's so right. we still have one more award to do from Citizens for Global Solutions. Okay. okay. I'm now proud to present Tom Hastings, who receiving the CGS Distinguished Service Award. Tom has a BA and MS in Electrical Engineering from MIT. He worked for the Digital Equipment Corporation, or DEC, in Massachusetts as lead operating systems programmer and later as a VAX computer architect. When he retired at 55, he moved his wife, Bonnie, and their two daughters to Manhattan Beach, California. There, he started a second career with Xerox, retiring in 2009. He was a crew member for a longtime CGS leader, Wendell Harder, racing Wendell's lightning sailboat. Wendell introduced Tom to the California chapter of Citizens for Global Solution. Tom succeeded Wendell as president from 2009 to 2016, leading monthly board meetings and annual meetings that were open to the public. Tom enjoys sailing, family photography, and the Southern California climate of Manhattan Beach. Bonnie, a former World Boston Herald reporter, and Tom are news junkies reading two local newspapers and watching three hours of recorded news programs on TV daily. Wow, that sounds depressing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are avid LA Dodger fans, still recovering from not getting to the World Series this year. They have had a dog mischief and a succession of cats from Pinky to Elvis. Tom is being recognized today for his distinguished service on the CGS board since 2010 and giving CGS members technical help with Google Boops, Google Docs, Google Drive, and Zoom. Tom also organized and led the CGS Grassroots Leaders Council starting in 2011 through 2014. He and Tom Camarella created the program committee and led it for three years from starting in 2016 when CGS was an all volunteer organization running six programs. In 2019, the two Toms hosted the CGS annual meeting in Los Angeles which featured Rod, Rod Roddenberry, son, son of the Star Trek founder, Gene Roddenberry. After the annual meeting, the Toms started and co-led a new LA chapter of CGS with monthly meetings and an essay contest. Thank you, Tom, for many years of distinguished service to CGS. And I'd like to now ask Bob Flax to hold up Tom's award and uh, sure. share it with us. I'll read the award and then hold it up. It says, in recognition for his outstanding contributions, Citizens for Global Solutions hereby presents to Tom Hastings the Distinguished Service Award. And this is what it looks like. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Tom. Tom, I'd like you to, you're unmuted. So would you please say a few words so everyone can see you? Sure. I thank you all for this award. Uh, and I remember fondly uh, the live annual conference we had in Los Angeles two years ago, that Tom Camarella and I and our two wives uh, hosted. It ranged from honoring 90-year-old Lucy Webster, a longtime CGS member, to young Gene Roddenberry, who is the son of Gene, uh, I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the young son uh, of Gene Roddenberry, this, the writer of Star Trek.
we had about a hundred Trekkies uh, attend that portion of a, our annual conference. And I uh, see so many of you here attended that uh, annual conference as well. Thank you. Great. Okay. And now for our special guest, I'd like to say first, good afternoon, Mr. Sheen. My name is Bob Flax. I'm the executive director of Citizens for Global Solutions. And on behalf of our organization, it's my pleasure to present to you our 2021 Global Citizen Award in recognition for your commitment to improve the world for all of us. We especially would like to recognize your recent work supporting Arthur Kanegas's film, The World is My Country, which we're about to see in less than an hour, your support of Citizens for Global Solutions as a member of our National Advisory Council, your countless acts of civil disobedience as you stand for peace and nonviolence and against nuclear power, nuclear weapons testing, and dangerous arms buildups, your position against all war and notably the invasion of Iraq in 2003, and your commitment to human rights, including your support of women, immigrants, and farm workers, as well as your opposition to the death penalty. Unfortunately, I can't hand you the award directly. Zoom is not yet that advanced, um, <laughs> but I, I will read it and then hold it up so you can, so you can see it. Um, so it says Citizens of Global Solutions, Global Citizen Award, presented to Martin Sheen, 2021. And this is what it is. So first from, let's get it presented in front of the camera, okay? And then close up the, uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's etched in there on, on yeah. clear uh, crystal, but okay. So that is the award. Um, it will be coming to you if I have to bring it there myself personally. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm honored to, to receive the award. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking of uh, some remarks I might uh, share. And I was thinking of, uh, Gary Davis, who started this whole uh, movement. And uh, I was reminded, uh, thinking of him, of some words that uh, Robert Kennedy said some years ago uh, uh, at the height of apartheid uh, when he spoke at the University of Cape Town, South Africa in 1966. If I may share them with you now. Each time someone stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, they send forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring. Those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and injustice. And those words are inscribed on his memorial as well at uh, Arlington National Cemetery. And they have been a very, very powerful source of inspiration for me and my generation ever since. So. Uh, Gary Davis has inspired, uh, has inspired uh, people like Bobby Kennedy did. And uh, so I, I, I think of them in the same uh, frame of reference. And, and again, I'm, I'm grateful to you. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, um, in closing, I want to thank you for everything you've done, both on camera and off. I want to let you know we have a few staff that are big fans. I think one is wearing you, you for pr your president. <laughs> you <for> president. <laughs> so, um, but I understand that you will not accept being drafted for that. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have to pass on that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got it. Yes. All right. Thank you okay. so much. I appreciate there we go. That. Thank you. Okay. Well, you know, um, uh, I, I do, do, would I have uh, uh, time to uh, sh just share a few thoughts? As, oh, ab absolutely. When I speak uh, in public, I, I, I draw on uh, other uh, writers and poets, uh, people that have inspired me. So if I can share oh, a few words as we fade out, uh, as I fade out. You're right, right, right. No, don't, you don't fade out, but go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, the Irish tell the story of a man who arrives at the gates of heaven and asked to be let in. St. Peter says, of course, just show us your scars. The man says, I have no scars. St. Peter says, what a pity. Was there nothing worth fighting for? We are called to find something in our lives worth fighting for, something that can unite the will of the spirit with the work of the flesh, something that maybe can inspire us to 
help lift up this country and all its people to that place where the heart is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, dear father, let our country awake. Amen. Amen. And thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to write you in for the next election, whether you like it or not. So, uh, so, so given that, um, this will bring our awards ceremony to a close. Um, Donna, I need to check on the time with you to see the next sequence. The next sequence is I'm now going to introduce Arthur Canagas. Okay. And he is going to introduce the movie um, that Martin G. 